Good evening, or good morning, or good afternoon, good midnight, good tomorrow, whenever it is you're watching this. Well, after the unexpected success of the other recipes I made in this wonderful episode of Cooking with Corona, I thought I'd try something a little more exotic. This is something I attempted to make before, but it didn't go exactly as planned. Right, it's some considerable time later, and it's going to take a lot of uh, very clever chopping about on my part when it comes to editing this. I'll just move you out here so you can see me properly. Now, attend closely, or don't, in case it should go and turn out to be a disaster, because I'm cooking several things at once, or shall be cooking several things at once. Um, we're going to be trying onion bhaji, curry, and dosa. Now, dosa is a sort of South Indian pancake. It's usually um, eaten as a breakfast dish, I think, which doesn't sound so uh, strange when you think of Americans eating pancakes with uh, maple syrup and such. But if you also think of it as almost like a Chinese pancake, the way they wrap up other things, it might clarify it a bit. Very well, here are the chickens that I have um, left out. So I'm going to boil this first and I'm going to put these cumin seeds and that cinnamon and some salt in there as well. Right, I'm no longer confident it's going to turn into a doser at all. I've been frying for too long. Not the best, not the worst. Yes, we shan't talk about it too much. I was going to make a curry in a dosa, and I shall do this probably within this same video, but I might do it separately. But since I don't have all the ingredients, I'm going to start out with onion bhaji. Now, onion bhaji, bhaji is a kind of fritter. Now, I did try doing all of this in a previous video, and I tried making the bhaji with breadcrumbs. These in here are a little flatter than I'd like, but this is something closer to what we should work towards. I hope you can see them. These are sort of balls. I don't want them to be flat, but some of the ones in my pan are. In fact, it's more like a stir fry than a fritter. Oh well. Yes, we shan't talk about that. We'll do it as it is. We'll made it, make it as it's supposed to be made with gram flour using a recipe combining the instructions by Mr. Pat Chapman, a kind of curry guru, and the instructions on the back of the box. Here, it's a box of gram flour or chickpea flour. So uh, if you're allergic to wheat, anything like that, you should be fine with it. As much as I've ridiculed vegetarians, this is also suitable for vegetarians. Unless, of course, they don't like onions, in which case, why are you a vegetarian? You can make it out of any single vegetable. Uh, parsnip is quite nice as well. If you've ever tried roast parsnip, you'll have a fair idea of what I'm talking about. I'm going to use the uh, onion, because that's usually what you'd start with where you go into an Indian restaurant. You wouldn't normally, if you were in India, you wouldn't normally have it as a starter or as a side dish. You'd just have it as a snack which is what I'm going to do for my evening snack. Both recipes call for one large onion. I have half of a slowly browning onion here, plus this one, so we're going to use them both. I'm sure after all this time you don't need my guidance on how to slice an onion, but in case you really, really want to see it, it's here. Ah. Leave out the, uh, leave out the stalk at the very top while you're cutting and it'll stop you from weeping. Next, some garlic cloves, preferably two, but uh, this teeny one came in here, so I'm gonna chop up that as well. Here uh, is the crushed garlic. Of course, if you've got a garlic crusher, and I'm sad to say I haven't, do that instead. Now, of course, if you know what you're doing, uh, you will actually do this after you've prepared your batter, but I don't know what I'm doing, so I didn't. So set aside the uh, garlic and onion, clear your space, toss a lemon over your shoulder to get it out of the way, and then get down to the batter. 
half a teaspoon of turmeric, half a teaspoon of cumin seeds. I suppose you use fenugreek leaves, but I've only got the powdered stuff, the ground stuff, so half a teaspoon of that then, just to see what happens. A bit of pepper, but I've only got uh, pepper that comes with this turmeric, so more turmeric then, grind it all in there. The Chapman tends to scorn uh, the bottled garam masala. Um, ordinarily, I agree with him, it doesn't look too appetising, does it? And usually he recommends that you make it, and you can make it by mixing together pretty much everything I've already just mentioned. But I have this little gadget here that grinds in the same way as that last one. So we'll put in about half a teaspoon of that. Should have a spoon there to measure it out. Oh, never mind. I know it looks as though I'm spilling all of this onto the floor, but I promise you I am not. I am putting it in this bowl. I should have mentioned that at the start, just in case you're following me. Never mind. And finally, the big fish. Figuratively speaking, I yet say this was vegetarians and vegans. Gram flour, which is flour made out of chickpeas, which I suppose isn't really flour, but never mind, who's listening? Oh, and I'll also put in a few mustard seeds for fun. I say a few, I put in a few too many. Never mind, bung them all in. I say all. Should I do all? Why not? One of the recipes calls for 85 grams, the other for 125. I'll go with 100. Just watch me measuring it out. Let you look at the scales in case you have an overwhelming desire to see it. That's about a hundred now, is it not? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nearly spilt it everywhere, but it's correct. And we'll put that in with this other ingredients, minus the onions and the garlic. There's a little bit at the bottom that won't go out, so I'll wash it out with water, which is good because I need to add water. I'm not sure how much water to add because neither of them give any quantities. Any, in any case, here is a cupful. Which again looks as though I'm spilling it all over the floor. I promise you I am not. Here, look at this. I'm going to get a wooden spoon and mix that all together. Very well then, that's what the batter looks like. I think that'll be enough for these onions. We'll see. Oh, and I'll squeeze in about a, a teaspoon of lemon juice as well. In that goes then. Right, next let's use vegetable oil, but I don't have any, so this is sunflower oil. Uh, less than a litre or fluid ounce. And that's as much as I have left. Hopefully it's enough. Next we put the onions and the garlic in the batter. Now, we'll mix this together then. You can't see, but oh, who cares? Look, if you really are clueless as to what it looks like when you stir a wooden spoon into a bowl with onions and batter in it, then this is it. Oh, and quick tip, uh, when you go to heat the oil, do put the saucepan on the correct hob and don't balance your hand on the one that's actually heated. You will burn your fingers. So glad I wasn't filming at the time. All right, with my one good hand then, I'm going to try and make this onion batter mixture into a ball. like so, and dunk that straight into the oil. Hmm. Not really a ball anymore, is it? Never mind. I'll keep doing that. Calls for eight to ten times. Hopefully I'll be able to make that number. Maybe I'll get a smaller ball here. Take this little one and put that in. Right, I don't think that's quite enough onion, so I'm going to use half of this red one as well. Well, actually, it's kind of worked, even though it's a little flat. I can't show you very easily, so it kind of split in half. One moment. Not too bad. So, one or two more balls. 
then I'm going to add the red onion in the remnants of the mixture. So, one. Two. Three. Three and a half. Do so wish I had uh, a little more oil because there's a danger of it sticking to the bottom. Come on, watch. See? That is more or less what it's supposed to look like. Flatter than I'd have liked. I'd have liked it to have stayed in a ball, but for what it is, it's infinitely better than the first one I tried. I'll just tried this one now. Oh, wow. That's actually good. Oh. Do it in both, but I'm going to make a sauce. I was supposed to do this with uh, uh, Greek yogurt, but this ordinary yogurt was, is as good as any. So in goes that yogurt. Put in some mint sauce. It's a tablespoonful I've just put in. Oh, and I've got some coriander leaves there. I'll put that in too. That. It looks quite revolting, but I assure you it tastes nice, or at least I hope it does. Don't want to have any false advertising now. I'm just turning over there. You can see where I've just turned this over. And put mist all over the lens. Never mind, I'm sure you saw what you needed to see. Yes, you're coming back now, coming back, coming back. Okay, good. All right, this much batter is left. I'm going to put the red onion in that. Okay, I'm going to get that out now. It's not as brown as the other one, but... Okay, now we'll put that in. Here's the red bhaji going in. And that's the last of the batter. Okay. Teleport. There are the bargees then. Flatter, as I said, than I'd have liked. To the ball, provided it's a deflated ball. Now, let's try it with the sauce. Lovely. Delicious. I'll come back when I've done the curry. This is the red onion bhaji for anyone who wants to see it. Very crumbly, but it tastes as it's supposed to. Very well, the next thing to prepare, now that I've shown I can in fact make onion barges, is the curry and the dosa. Now, uh, after all the times I've made fun of vegetarians, one of them is in fact going to be a vegetarian curry. I'll show you how to make a meat one later. Now, uh, the reason I'm doing this, by the way, is because uh, basically my fridge needs clearing out. It's uh, overstacked, there's dust at the back, um, and it's not do working properly. So I need to get rid of all the vegetables I have at once, and the easiest way of getting rid of vegetables all at once is either soup, stew, or in fact curry. Now, with potatoes, sweet potatoes, and I've got both here, and carrots as well, what you really need to do is either leave them to soak for the night or boil them. I'm going to boil these sweet potatoes now. Just leave those on to boil then. The easiest way to test for whether they're properly boiled is to put a fork down the middle and see if it slips off at once. I'll show you once they're there. Almost forgot. Parsnip as well. Put that in as well. Alright, let's give it a test now. Parsnip. Not 
quite potatoes. Oh, sweet potatoes, they're done. Can't even pick them up, it slips off it so easily. Carrots. Yeah. Leave it a little longer. I've got here 20 minutes, by the way. Right, well, a good thing not to do is to leave it in until the eva uh, water evaporates and the uh, vegetables burn, but at least it makes it much easier to peel the sweet potatoes. Very well, next I'm going to make the curry. So, all those vegetables that I had to soak and which got slightly burned, I've got there. I've just got a teaspoon of this coconut oil. You can use a vegetable oil if you wish. I'm going to use quite a bit of it, I think, because I like the flavour. You can use peanut as oil as well, if you so wish. I've got that in a pan over yonder. Now, all I need to do is put that on. Maybe put in a little bit more. Put that on. Onion here. You know up by now how to chop an onion and some cloves, cloves of garlic. So I've just... Uh, got these uh, stalks at the very end that stop me from weeping. Garlic's next. Just one clove of garlic, I think. There's the garlic, and there's the onion. I'm going to shove that in. Now, the recipe calls for cauliflower, but I'm going to use broccoli. Just these pieces here. Not too many. In they go. Green beans. Spinach. And other such rabbit food. So we'll cook that in the coconut oil. Awesome Put in some turmeric and pepper. In some garam masala, about a teaspoonful, well, a tablespoon. Pinch of cumin, another pinch of cumin, and here, a little bit of curry powder, pinch of curry powder. Another pinch of curry powder, the, about a teaspoon and a half, and vegetable stock. Maybe just a tiny bit of, yeah, not too many chilli flakes. Oh, cinnamon, ground cinnamon, let's have some of that too. Put in a little bit more coconut oil there, you can see it's hardened coconut oil. So, turmeric pepper, fenugreek, garam masala, cumin, curry powder, and a few chilli flakes. And we'll wait for the onions and the garlic to go brown. And once they have, we'll put in the rabbit food. Should I put some coconut milk in? Maybe. Teensy glass full. I'm gonna grate in some ginger half a root or a bit. See how much I end up putting in. All right. Spinach. The original recipe says cauliflower. I'm going to use some broccoli. Green beans. Coriander. Potatoes, sweet potatoes, and parsnips, and carrots. I'll put in some more stock. Should I shove in some dates for some sweetness? Why not? Just get the stones out and we'll do it. I've had apricot in curry before. Why not date? Just two. 
just to see if it works. And just squeeze in some lemon as well. Okay, next the doses. Now there is a very large chance that this will not work. If you're clever, you can mix lentils together overnight and then grind them until you make a paste. But I'm not clever enough, so we shan't do it that way. What we are going to do is have a cup of rice flour here. Mix that together with either plain flour or gram flour. Instead of about half a teaspoon of bicarbonate soda, just as well, because that's about all I have left. And just a few mustard seeds. You can, if you like, make it extra herby, but I'm not really confident enough to experiment with mine. Mix that in with a bit of water. There's a very good chance this will not work. Observe. Can I do it? Can I do it? Can I do it? Hmm? Maybe not. Could it work? Who knows? Well, the vegetable curry worked in any case. There we are. Wish I'd just made it with boiled rice now. Well, there's smoke all over the place, but at least if the place burns down, I'll have a nice meal beforehand. Albeit without my dosa. Well, oh. mm. excellent vegetable curry. But, glad I didn't make it at the same time. as I make the meat curry. Oh, it's lovely. Nice salty taste. Not too hot, not too spicy. Over here, got some barges cooking again. Dropped a whole chunk of garlic in there. Don't do that. Now cut up the beef, as you can see I have done there, and then coat them in flour. You're probably supposed to use normal flour, but I should be using coconut flour just to see if it works. And into the sieve. Something I keep forgetting to do is to sift properly. So I'm just smacking away at this sieve to make the um, flour go through into the bowl and hopefully all will be well and it will be enough to coat the beef in. So now we'll take the beef pieces and coat the flour in that. A little bit of oil in a pan and bit by bit we start putting in the beef. Now while that's cooking, I'm going to cook. I'm I'm going to cut up the other vegetables that I've got. Fifty grams of green beans, twenty of broccoli. Have a pepper or two. Cut that up, and use as much spinach, coriander, and parsley as you like. The camera on the floor. Try not to do that. So I'm slicing up the red pepper. Cut up these beans. I'm sure you know what chopped up vegetables look like, but here we are now. I think one side of that will be about done. Aha! Nicely browned there. Nicely browned there. Nicely browned there. I'm going to put some more of the same spices that I coated it in onto it while it's cooking. Now I'm going to take this large pot here, put that in its place, 
drop in the meat and its juices all at once. Including the bits that got slightly burned. And the one ingredient that I haven't mentioned yet is the beef broth. I've only got oxtail soup here, but we'll try it all the same, see if it works. Bit of water? I think so. In that goes then. Cup full of coconut milk. Mm, now it's a bit too watery. Now I need it to be more solid. Never mind. I'll add some more of the ginger that I didn't put into the vegetable curry dish. Notice how I'm not dropping the, the remnants of the ginger in as I did the last time. So here's the spinach. Here's the coriander. Parsley. Give it a lovely stir. Hmm. Maybe I need another tin of broth. Actually, I think I'll add some gravy stock to it as well. Thicken it a bit. There. Maybe another broth. I was going to say just a bit of it, but I seem to have broken it, so off it comes. It's the point of having one of these things to help you pull the thing off if it just breaks off while you're doing it. There. That's beef and vegetable. Sure it will work. Onions, peppers, broccoli, beans. It's more of a curry flavoured soup than a, at this point, than a curry, but I suppose the large chunks of meat make it a stew. Maybe if I could thicken it with more gravy. How about some chilli flakes, since it's a curry? Not too many, add according to taste. How about some cloves for scent? There. It's only going to add one or two. That's about eight. Whatever. Hmm. Hmm. I could eat the thing from here, but vegetables aren't quite cooked through. Now, onto the doses. This is the complicated part. Okay, I've tipped some more of that uh, coconut flour in to thicken it even further. That should do it. But what I haven't put in is what I'm going to make the dosa batter with. Very well then, I've got about a cup worth of this uh, coconut flour. And I'll just sieve that out once more. Next thing you'll need is some rice flour. Now, I found this very difficult to find. It's not the same as ground rice. There's rice flour and there's ground rice. I've got this here, which is called ground rice flour, just to confuse me. I hope it works. By the way, what I'm using here can be replaced with gram flour. And there's at least one recipe that uses ordinary flour. So a cup full of this, with a bit of luck, luck or providence, it we will prevail. Just sift that out in the same bowl. Half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda.
I think that's what I missed in the last time I was trying it. Sprinkle of mustard seeds, pinch of salt. And now some water, but a cup full of water. Now I have no idea whether this is what it's supposed to look like, but it looks a little different from all the other attempts, so maybe I am getting it right this time. We can conclude from that that it doesn't work with coconut oil, but at least I had to bubble up the way I wanted to. Gram flour it is next. Ah. I'll put it on this failed batter. There's rice flour in it. This just might as well be the rice. And for once, when I show you something cooked, you're not misting up, which is always a good start when I want to show you something. Here we are then. As before, if I die, I'll blame the cow. Mmm! Excellent curry sauce. So. So that's onion barges. Vegetable curry, beef curry. Hopefully, I can get the doses right one day. Very well, I've got a curry cooking once again, and I'm going for, I think, now the fourth time to try and make a dose. There's a strong possibility it's not going to work like all the other times. If it doesn't work this time, I think I'm going to give it up. Where I think I've been going wrong is that I've not been using a non-stick pan. That's the crucial thing that's been missing in this. So let's try now. Chickpea or gram flour. Just sift out this cup full of it now. Like so. Something which is like rice flour. I hope it works in the same way. Sift it out in the same way. Quarter of a teaspoon of a carbonate of soda. Water. One and a half cups. Come on, have a look. See how that's stirring in. Still got some lumps in. I wish we didn't have. Now I'm heating the hob on which this non-stick pan is resting and when it's hot enough I'm going to ladle out the batter. Okay, hopefully it's going to work this time. Okay, hopefully we can peel this at some point. I'm afraid it's starting to burn a little bit. Let's see if we can turn it. Oh, we can! For once we can! At long, long last, I've got it! Now, all I have to do is do it repeatedly. Excellent. 
so I'll be able to have these curries that I'm making here, at least one of them, I'll be able to put inside this and you'll be able to see how it's supposed to be used. Let's do it again then. Oh look, you can see those holes coming through, that's quite common. Play around with recipes like this by the way. Sort of tilt the pan as I'm doing here to spread it out. Very well. Here's a smaller one, you might be able to see. A much larger doser would sort of cover the whole thing, but still for a beginner to get the whole thing and flip it over is quite an accomplishment. I think in future, if I made it again, which I may, but not on camera, or if I do, then it'll be for a different kind of curry. I would use a different quantity, maybe, warm, maybe more water, so I could make more of them. Oh. Oh. Remember, you don't have to make the vegetable curry quite as complicated as I did in the curry that you saw, saw me make. I didn't film this particular curry that I've got over there because more or less the same, you didn't need to see it twice. But you've seen the dosa. Here's a bigger one of the more correct size. A bit more crumbly, but it still works. Remember how... Um, if you look at it here, sort of, with the vegetables wrapped up, you can see how it works almost like the Mexican tortilla, or the Chinese pancake that you have duck in, in the restaurants. This is the meat one then. crumbling a bit. See how nicely wrapped it is? I know it's a bit uh, broken here, but this is much closer to the sort of thing we need. And of course, if you were eating it in a restaurant, you probably would eat it with a knife and fork, which in fact I'm going to do now. What I would suggest actually is sweetening the batter a little bit, or putting seeds in, make it more flavoursome. Hmm. Well. This is gonna be a ridiculously long video. What with my having to clip together different time periods. Probably too many mistakes to put um to get through, so I probably shan't have any uh, outtakes. I may have been feeling generous, we'll see. In any event, hope you've enjoyed. Ta-ta!